going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an awesome day today. Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies in the red. We have Bitcoin down 10%. Ethereum hitting an all-time high, pulling back almost 12%. What is happening? In yesterday's video, we asked the question, is the Bitcoin top in? Well, I'm going to tell you today why I do not believe the top is in. Now, there has been a lot of FUD, especially right now. We are having a dump as I'm making this video. Don't forget, in the U.S., we do have the presidential inauguration, so that could get a little bit tricky today as far as the markets are concerned. But what I want to talk about is why things could get extremely volatile, but I am still betting on Bitcoin and altcoins to perform quite well. There may be one more final opportunity for the ultimate dip that everyone is waiting for, but I'm telling you right now, what you are seeing is pure manipulation. I proved it to you a week ago, and I'm going to show you today exactly why I still believe that is the case. I'm going to show you the exact targets that I'm looking for if you are trying to trade this pattern right now, if you do want to try to long some of the supports, and I'm also going to explain why what we are seeing right now actually resembles more of the beginning of 2017 rather than the all-time high in 2017 when we hit 20K and why Bitcoin still, even from these prices, could potentially have a 10X left before the end of this year. And if that sounds good to you, you know what to do. If you are not subscribed, definitely consider it. And friendly reminder, I am not going to be able to make any videos for the rest of this week. I'll try to see if I can squeeze one in, but I won't be in my studio. So make sure that you guys head on over to Twitter at the crypto zombie, just give me a follow and I'll be doing updates over there. So without further ado, let's dive in. Let's have a look. Oh, and by the way, did you guys see that uh, in block number 666, 666, they actually put the, uh, the phrase, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. All right. So uh, yeah, always remember, stay humble and <laughs> let's, let's dive in. Now, we are right now, some people said, oh, we're falling out of this triangle, right? So let me just get this triangle out of the way because everyone's looking at this. But what I'm really looking at is for these retests right here. Now, this is an absolutely perfect area for Bitcoin to bounce off of. Now, what I think could be happening is we are just doing some healthy consolidation. However, I do believe, and I'm not saying that this could happen, but it is possible that we could have one more fake out. I could see Bitcoin coming down. My first level that I'm looking at is around 32,786. And the second level that I'm looking at is down around $30,740. And you could see why we had a lot of support down here. And I do believe even if we did fall out of this pattern, I'm not going bearish yet. I think that would be an amazing retest. And I would expect that Bitcoin would bounce off of that. And my absolute lowest possible target for Bitcoin would be this his previous resistance down here at about 28,322. Now, this is the thing. I do not think that if Bitcoin does even go down to these levels, that we're going to stay there for very long. I imagine it will be bought up incredibly fast. And I want to show you why in just a second. We're going to have a look at the whale maps, but you can see right here, we are well above all of the major moving averages, the 50, the 100, the 200. And we did have our double golden crosses way, 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 way back here at the end of last year. And as far as the 21 exponential that I've been telling you guys about on the day, Daily. It has provided one, two, three, four, five bounces, and I would continue to look at that level. Currently, that is right around the $34,375 level. We are, in fact, sitting below it. The trend is your friend until the end. So right now, I would be looking to potentially long these bounces until we break the structure, which I don't believe that we've done that yet, so I remain bullish. You can see right now, we are dipping inside of the EMA ribbons on the daily, but it wouldn't be the first time that we've done this. You could see we did it back here. We actually got all the way down to almost the third MA right there. So I am still maintaining my bullish attitude towards Bitcoin. So what potentially is causing some of this disruption in the market? Well, number one, we had uh, Bitcoin derivatives were extremely overheated. You could see over here, they have some data from digital assets, and they say that the funding rate was hovering around 0.1%, which is 10 times higher than the 0.01% that we usually expect the average to be, right? So it may have just essentially needed to cool off. Now, there is also some doubt happening right now among traders. You know, they're doubting that Bitcoin can get back above $40,000. I've seen lots of people saying they're starting 
starting to take money off the table. We saw Guggenheim come out and say, hey guys, maybe you should sell now. Things are getting a little bit crazy, right? But the interesting thing is when you actually have a look at it, and we've spoke about the Bitcoin relative volatility, right? And comparing it to 2012 and even 2016, like Dan Tapiro says, he says, first of all, this is a phenomenal chart. We have a strong part of the Bitcoin up move that has not yet started. The chart suggests that we are closer to around Q1 of 2017 than Q4 of 2017. Now, keep in mind, we saw five, six, seven different dips on the road from $1,000 Bitcoin to $20,000 Bitcoin where, you know, we would have these 30%, 40%, 50% corrections, right? Crazy times. And the trend was our friend and Bitcoin was able to do a 20x from January. Now, let now am I saying we're going to do a 20x from here? That would be a very expensive Bitcoin. It is possible, but could a 10x still be in the cards? If we 10x right from today's levels, we're sitting you know, at the low 30,000s. Could we have a $300,000 Bitcoin by the end of this cycle? I absolutely think that is possible. Dan Tapiro says you could see a 5 to 8x. So maybe I'm a little bit over bullish, but what can I say, guys? I am a fan of Bitcoin, if you didn't know that by watching these videos. But Bitcoin whales clearly are expecting massive price rises as the number of whale wallets continue to accumulate and grow in number. In fact, as of January 20th, there were in excess of 2,400 large balance wallets, which are wallets that hold minimally 1,000 Bitcoin or around $33 million by today's prices. So these guys have continued to accumulate. In fact, in just this year alone, we're still not even in February. You had 164 new whale addresses created. So there is some massive accumulation happening in the background. And if you want to look at the main areas to focus on, you have to look at these whale maps, these whale bubbles. These are where we had some of the largest institutional accumulations for Bitcoin, or at least we... We don't really know, actually, if it was institutions, but we do know that it was whales. And we also know that it wasn't exchanges because the exchange wallets identify themselves, right? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, they say they do. Do they have some secret cold storages or something? Probably. But for the most part, these are not exchanges. These are actual blue whales accumulating. And look at these levels right now. You have between 31,400 and 32,000 having a massive support with the largest support right around the $29,314 level with a minor support at around 28,727. That is why I said there is a possibility that the price could go back down to those levels, but the whales are going to be buying at those prices. Bitcoin is not going to be sitting below $30,000 for months on end or anything like that. Yes, it could be a bit of a um, um, consolidation period, right? That is possible. It could be boring, right? Try to shake people out either through boring them to death or by having these crazy volatile movements. But like Charles Edwards says, and this is the proof of the liquidity shock, you cannot deny the fact that Grayscale already owns 3% of all circulating Bitcoin. He says their holdings are growing at around 10% a month. At this rate, they could hold 10% of all Bitcoin in 2021. The centralization of Bitcoin has moved from exchanges to Wall Street. The difference is this is a one-way model. Now, this sounds bad on the surface. This sounds like centralization. But keep in mind that Grayscale is just a custodial solution, right? They're just an entity. They're not actually the ones that are buying it because they want it, there's actually demand from their clients. And that is the reason why, um, you know, they do, they have been accumulating as much as they have. In fact, it says that they do remain the largest institutional buyer in the space. They purchased $607 million, 16,244 Bitcoin, uh, 18 times the Bitcoin mined in one day. So if that is not an example of supply and demand and the liquidity crisis, I don't really know what else I can talk about on this channel to prove to you that any of these movements are just just moves trying to shake out the weak hands. They are trying to get you <laughs> to get scared, to, to panic sell your Bitcoin so they can accumulate more. And they have stronger hands than the majority of the average retail trader, let me tell you that. So... This also talks about the fact that they are looking for a long-term play in Bitcoin. Now, 
All right, let's get back to the FUD. If you guys watched my video from a couple days ago uh, where I had the FUD high buy low segment, you can understand how these guys have done it in the past. So you have Scott Menard, right? He's over at Guggenheim, and he's talking about the technical target upside, 35000 has been exceeded, time to take some money off the table. Lots of people were confused about this. Weren't you just calling for a $400,000 Bitcoin, Scott? Well, oddly enough, on Friday, Scott who is the CIO of Guggenheim, he was interviewed over at Bloomberg Television, and guess what he said? After making the statement that he thinks you should sell, he said, well, I think the one thing that we're seeing is the sudden interest in retail. You know, in a story that appeared yesterday on Bloomberg, there was a discussion about how a lot of crypto outlets are being overwhelmed. They're starting to limit the orders because they cannot handle the demand. We saw this happen with eToro, right? He says, I think in the short term, what they're telling you is we're moving into a speculative frenzy. And that was one of the reasons for my tweet on Monday to say, perhaps it's time to take some money off the table. All right, stick with me here. He goes on to say, but the other side is that it's demonstrating that crypto is becoming much more mainstream. And the $400,000 price that I talked about really was based off the supply of gold in the world. And crypto in a lot of ways is more attractive than gold. It's portable. He goes on to talk about, you know, we know why crypto, Bitcoin specifically, is better than gold. I'm not going to go into that again. He says, but if you believe what I said, that it'll go to 400000 eventually, 2% of your portfolio could become 20% of your portfolio before this year is over. So you don't want to get too overweight, but certainly an allocation of a couple of percent of your portfolio seems to be a prudent thing. And... Even though they have said that they, I guess, started buying maybe for some of their very, very private customers, we do know that they're waiting for SEC approval. So was that just another scare tactic from these guys trying to make sure that the price doesn't get too far away from them before they really start scooping it up? I wouldn't put it past them. Now, I told you we did fall out of this blue box territory And some people are saying it could be time for alt season. Now, we did see altcoins have a nice little rally. Keep in mind, altcoins tend to do this when Bitcoin goes sideways. Bitcoin has been range bound in this asymmetrical triangle now for quite some time. But are we officially in alt season? And I know a lot of people are going to be frustrated to hear me say this, but I'm not totally convinced yet. Yes, we've seen altcoins rally, but have a look right here. If we look at this support right here where we had these two bounces back in January of 2018 and May of 2018, even though, yes, we have fallen out of the blue box territory, we are still hanging out on these critical supports. And the previous resistance has also become support from the downward sloping trend. So we have not fully broken down. What I need to see to confirm it is to get Bitcoin somewhere down in here, inside of this no man's land, and then retest somewhere down here, then I do believe we would be, you know, just close a weekly candle or something, and then I'd be 100% convinced that we are in alt season. Although, although Soldier Boy says he's considering creating his own cryptocurrency, so maybe that is a sign that it's time for crazy alt season in retail mania, right? I mean, having a look right here, We have seen the uh, total market cap, excluding Bitcoin, have absolute amazing volume coming in. We've seen the double bottom that I spoke about. We broke above the $236 billion level. And really, to beat the all-time high where we closed out on the weekly, we only need to go up about uh, from where we are right now up to 420. We only need a 26% increase in cryptocurrency altcoins to break the previous all-time high. So this could be a possibility. We've been having a look at Polkadot. Polkadot, um, some of these key levels it has respected, but it is in a bit of a downwards flag. You can see right here we had one. Um, Just be careful if you guys are trading this on leverage. These altcoins can get really tricky. Like for example, look at this dip right here where it was sitting around $12.80. It dipped all the way down to $11.71 before having a massive 50% spike to the upside. So Like I said, not really recommended to trade altcoins using leverage. Um, You can. I do it sometimes. If you're going to do it, you can check out Femex. I do have a tutorial uh, popping up above. Links below. $150 you can get for using that. Um, You know, personally, I just like to trade Bitcoin. And look at that, guys. Look at that already. Look at how that wick got bought up. Now, I'm not saying that that was the bottom. But if we do have a look over here, I mean, that was perfect. That was absolutely perfect. And there you go. Great opportunity to long. And this is why we use these trends. This is why we look at these trend lines to have a better idea of where we're going. So 
A lot of times it's just part of the charts. Sometimes it's FUD. I'm not ruling a dump down here, even to the $28,000 level out of the cards. But like I said, guys, the trend is your friend until the end. And this is a very strong trend upwards. I mean, look right here. We're still sitting on some of those key levels. So talking super quick though about some altcoins and then let's get on out of here. So as you guys know, obviously, uh, I think I've made it pretty obvious. I'm super bullish on Polkadot. And this news came out. Staking pool company Moonstake and Singapore-based RockX are partnering to support development on the Polkadot network. The partnership intends to accelerate the spread of Polkadot in the blockchain industry through staking. This aligns with Moonstake's mission to become the largest staking pool in Asia. And, you know, obviously when you're looking for these low cap gems, what you want to find is a project that has good fundamentals, but also has a low enough cap that you can get in and the reward would most likely outweigh the risk. Whereas the upside potential is a lot higher than losing your money, right? So say you put like, you know, $1,000, I don't know, into a project, you know, worst case scenario, you could lose $1,000, but at a low market cap where you could pay, you know, maybe get a 5X or a 10X, then that's really what you want to look at. Now, those are obviously the more risky trades, you know, investing in something like Polkadot, Ethereum, those are a lot safer, right? They're higher, they have more liquidity, but you may not make those 100x gains that you can get in some of the lower cap cryptos. One project that I've been looking at is Evolution Finance. Now they're over at Dow Maker. Dow Maker actually has had a pretty interesting model to their choice of how they release their different uh, projects. The one thing that I like is that they keep the raises relatively low and they keep the allocation spread um, relatively thin from what I'm aware of. So that means that you don't have these big whales controlling it. And also the lower uh, market caps will allow for higher growth, right? And the interesting thing is that actually Evolution, when they do launch, they're launching with 100% of their EVN tokens that are going to be made available through liquidity pools on Uniswap. So obviously I do suggest you do your own research. Don't just you know buy something because I talked about it. But these are the types of projects you wanna look at maybe with these lower cap um, potentials. And also, you know, they actually have good business strategies and it's real projects, not just white paper promises like, oh guys, don't worry, you know, in 10 months from now, we're gonna roll out this feature, right? Something like that. So we've seen the success of things like Uniswap. We know that decentralized finance is only being beginning. And as far as this red is right here, remember, buy blood when it's in the streets, even if it's your own blood. That being said, my friends, things could get crazy, but I'm still saying the trend is intact. And even if we have a dip down to even the high 20,000s, 28,000, I still remain a Bitcoin bull. I still remain Bitcoin long. And that being said, friendly reminder, again, I will not be able to make a video until Monday. What are you guys going to do with yourself? I know it's crazy. It, I, it, it should not be allowed. I, sh I should just be kicked off YouTube forever. How dare I? But that being said, head on over to Twitter. It's at the crypto zombie. It's also down in the comments. Uh, well, in my description, you, it's just at the crypto zombie. I mean, literally just go search. Okay. And I'll be doing my updates from there. So hopefully you won't be able to miss anything. If I see any cool news, I'll update it. Also, if you guys are looking to trade over on Bybit, Fem, Bybit or Femex, I do have the links below. Uh, yeah. $520 bonus, uh, something, something crazy they got over at Bybit. So check that out. And that is it for me today. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that, um, well, I'm not going to be able to do this every single day for the remainder of the week, but you guys know I'm not going anywhere. So hope you guys enjoy your week. Be safe out there. Don't do anything crazy. And like I said, I do believe if we do have a dip, I think it's for buying. I do not think the top is in. And I do think we could potentially see a $300,000 Bitcoin by the end of this year. Very possible. Thank you so much. Get subscribed if you haven't. Join the free Telegram group. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.